come on. <laughs> I need to smudge myself. Just want a small piece. Ugh. Making a mess. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> hey, Bridget. Hi, Melody. Okay. Doing it. <laughs> Happy Thursday. How's everybody doing? Smudge you guys too. Everybody gets a smudge. Hey, Rose. <laughs> now that I've made a mess everywhere. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Claudia. Hey, Jean. Everybody's coming in. Coming in for the chat. <laughs> what will I talk about today? Just kidding. I have a theme. I posted it. <laughs> Good morning, Margaret. Hi, Maya. Looking forward to seeing you later. Hey, Amy. Yay, everybody's here. Yeah. Uh, did you have a lot of, Jean says she doesn't sleep great. Did you have a lot of crazy, crazy interrupting dreams or just lots of energy coming in? Hey, Susie. Thank you. These are made by my friend, Allie Fontaine, and you can find her Muse by Allie. I'm trying to tag her, um, but I don't know why that isn't working. So I'll just write it here, Muse by Allie. There, <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Sandy. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm having another coffee problem, which is a problem big time because I really need coffee because I'm really tired. <laughs> like I couldn't even think about even putting concealer on today. Um, but the coffee is like upsetting my nervous system. So it's like I have a few sips of it and I just feel like mm, really not good and it doesn't even taste good anymore. So I'm in search of a new um, wake up liquid. That's what I'm doing. Hey, Stephanie. Okay. Hi, Emily. Hi, Sissy. My sister's watching on Instagram. Um, happy belated birthday to with you all, Stephanie. I just saw your post. All right. So, friends, hello. Here we are. So, let's first talk about what's happening currently in astrology <laughs> this week <laughs> in 2020. Um, Mars just went retrograde in Aries. So what the hell does this mean? I posted an article by Chani Nicholas in our group that you could read. It's, it's pretty like long and comprehensive. And so I'm going to give you my non-astrologist um, point of view on what is happening here. So first we're going to talk about Mars. Mars is the planet of aggression, passion, action, your sexuality, all of that, all of the driving forces, and it is the planet or the god of war, okay? So, yay, everybody. Are you ready for this? But here's the kicker, right? So Mars energy is like that primal animal force. Like, it's, it's not thinking before doing, it's doing. It's like what your, what your, um, what your primal animal instinct wants you to do. It's like jumping into that action. And it's in retrograde, which means that it's focused inwards, right? It's slowing down. And Mars doesn't love that, and neither does Aries. So it's, it's a little bit of a frustrating halt, but a necessary one. That's going to help us to really understand our driving forces. What drives your passions, what ignites your unique sexuality, what makes you angry, right? 
what inspires you to action? So these are all questions that are up on our respective tables right now and on the collective table. So as always, whatever we are experiencing in our microcosm is also happening on the macrocosm. And so consider whatever you're feeling right now is also happening on the larger world stage. So fun, fun bounds for everybody. Everyone's experiencing this Mars retrograde differently, depending on so many factors, right? Because we're all at different places in our lives. We are all experiencing things in a different energy. So right now, when Mars clicked into retrograde, you may have felt incredibly exhausted, or you may have felt suddenly completely exhilarated and euphoric even. But keep in mind that this retrograde is not going to last three days. It's going to be in retrograde until mid-November. So this is not a quick flash in the pan. This isn't a quick observation about what makes you angry, what excites your passion. <clears throat> this is a longer haul. This is serious introspection and figuring this out. So whatever you're feeling now is your entry feeling. It's going to change as we move through. It's going to be affected by the different signs we pass through. We're still in Virgo right now. We're going to be moving into Libra season next, which is a totally different energy. So as we move through the rest of this, uh, the next few months in this Mars retrograde, all of these things are going to take on different flavors and energies for us. But I want to talk to you guys about all of these emotions that Mars brings with it because they've been coming up, right? We as humans love to classify things, right? We love sorting. What's like the first thing we teach our kids to do? Sort the like things. Put the things that are like each other together. Put all the blue blocks together, all the red circles together. And we're like, yay, you did it. You can identify things that are the same. Well, what about identifying things that are different, right? Because we have so many things inside of us that are different. All of us have unique, different signatures with our energies, and none of us are exactly alike. So we love to classify things. We love to say this is a good thing and this is a bad thing. This is the right way and this is the wrong way. And most of us, you know, just kind of float through with this and don't even consider who's telling us what the right thing and the wrong thing is. We're just like, we want to be good. We want to be good people. We want to do the right thing. We want to make our parents proud. We want to do right by our kids. We want our friends to love us. You know, we have to help society. So let's be good. Let's be good. Well, what that does is creates an area, a huge area, actually, in ourselves that we do not look at, that we repress. We look at emotions like fear, anger, anxiety, sadness, any of these things. We're like, we don't want that. So how do we get that out? As soon as we are angry, we think, okay, how do I, how do I fix this anger? As soon as we are sad, how do I not be sad? We have a friend who's sad. What, what do we do? We, I mean, I don't know. I've seen some memes that are very accurate, like here's some toothpaste. That's me. But we see a friend who's sad, and we want to help them to not feel sad anymore, right? Because it, it sucks, and we don't want them to feel sad. And also, it's awkward for us, and we don't know how to fix their sadness. We are obsessed with fixing the emotions that we think are not good. But that is not allowing us to experience 50% of life. Because where there's happiness, there's sadness. They are part of the same whole. They just move around, right? Passion, anger, right there, all together. So we are in the passion 
anger, war energy, but it's in retrograde. So it's time to look at our passion, anger, and war energy and start to figure that out. How do we tap in to these extreme energetic emotions and allow them to be a force for reconstruction as opposed to deconstruction? The energy of anger is super action oriented. It is potent magical energy. And if you haven't been tapping into your anger, you have been missing this incredible transmutative energy that can absolutely catapult you from one spot to the other almost immediately because it's that powerful. We think of anger as being out of control and as being something we shouldn't we shouldn't have, we should fix, right? But think of it this way, right? All of these big emotions are actually launch points. You don't live in them. We don't live in joy. We don't live in happiness. We don't live in complete peace and contentment. All of these emotions are places we visit. We go in and we go out, in and out. Thinking you need to be in one emotion for your whole existence is insane because it's just not going to happen. And it's also, if we did that, we would be really, really boring because we wouldn't know how anything else was. We would have no texture, no excitement, um, no color. It would just be like a flat line. So when you feel anger, when you feel sadness, when you feel fear, when you feel pain, just remember that you don't live there. You're visiting and there's something for you to learn there. And there's something for you to jump into from that space. So the same thing with joy. If you don't live in joy, you visit there. You're in, it feels so good. You collect all the things from there and then you move into what, whatever the next emotion is. So you don't have to be afraid of your anger. Now I'm going to preface this because this is important. If you are a person who is constantly angry, like more than not, if you feel that you're always on edge and ready to blow up at people, that is different than what we are talking about today, okay? Because I'm absolutely not endorsing that you should be blowing up at people five times a day. That means there's bigger things at play in your, in your circumstances that are inflaming you and triggering you to have that kind of emotional response all day long. So that is something different. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when something makes you angry, some circumstance happens and it inflames your anger. What do you do? Is it okay to feel that? Why did it happen? We've been talking about this in intuition mentorship this week, which I think is funny being that we were rolling into Mars retrograde, but your anger is what spurs you to some sort of action. So allow yourself to feel it, right? You're angry, you're freaking angry. Does somebody make you mad? Be mad. It doesn't mean you have to attack them or rip them to pieces. You can have a way of handling your anger that allows you to get it out. So the first thing to do is to figure out if you need to physically release, because usually that's what you need to do first, because anger is action oriented. So dismiss yourself from the situation in a safe way and go do the physical thing that will release the excess energy because you cannot be expected in a moment of high intense anger to process that and understand what made you angry. You're just freaking angry. So get out of there, go find a car, scream, throw rocks, break some things, whatever it is you need to do to get that energy out. Even if it means going for a run or whatever it is you do, Physically get it out, get that energy out. Then ask yourself, what made me angry and why? Journal it, write it all down because this is important stuff. This is the energy that is going to allow you to make some changes in your life that will help you to achieve some growth, okay? So write it all down, figure out what it was and then you can go to, to the situation or the person and you can say, you made me angry and here's why. And I promise you, it will be a much more productive conversation than the scream fest you might've had um, if you had just gone right at them and not gotten your 
physical energy tapped out. But that's just a suggestion. It's what I suggest because it's what has helped me with the anger. Um, a lot of us, especially women, are afraid of feeling our anger or expressing our anger because we have been in relationships where anger is not allowed um, or we have been in relationships where our partner has been very angry and that has been very dangerous for us. So there's a lot of trauma responses that are built in around the emotion of anger and it feels very unsafe. So if that is the case for you, have a lot of extra empathy with yourself about how you respond to anger, but also start to look at how your anger is manifesting. Because if you are repressing your feelings, if you are repressing your big, passionate, angry, um, sexual, all of these like big, big, big Mars feelings, if you're repressing those, they're in your body and they're causing issues. They're causing pain. They're causing tightness. They're causing you to have anxiety and fear. There's a lot of ways that repressing your anger can just kind of burn you out from the inside. And so it's really important to safely get these things out. And as we move into this new energy, it's becoming safer and safer for us, especially as women, to start saying, no, this is how I actually feel. I actually feel this way and because this is bullshit. Like you can say that now, right? You can look at something and say like, the reason I'm angry is because this is all bullshit and I should be angry. Like what the hell? So be honest with yourself. It's okay. You're going to be able to find plenty of like-minded people these days who will confirm for you that it is indeed bullshit and you should be angry. So feel your feelings. Your feelings are not there to confuse you or lie to you. They're there to assist you in making some movements. So as we are for the next, I don't know what, two months, going to be in this Mars retrograde, find out about yourself a little bit. Tap in. What makes me feel passionate? What makes me angry? Get to know this part of yourself. Um, it's, it's also the part that has our sexual energy. And I want to talk about this a little bit too, because... Whereas Venus rules your romantic relationships, your romantic attachments, Mars, the planet of aggression, rules your sexuality. This is your raw sexuality. And for a lot of us women, this is a piece of us that just like our anger, we have shoved down because all of the restrictions put upon us as sexual beings are completely conflicting. They, they don't work together. We're, I, I've seen so many memes about this um, that I'm like, yes, <laughs> I agree with all the memes. But we're told to be good girls. We're told to be sexy, but not too sexy. We're told to be uh, good people and to really like have a certain image about us, but then like be a freak in the sheets. It's like, how, do we, how are we going to be all of those things at once? What, where is our true essence and how can we tap into that without worrying so much about judgment, without worrying about being slutty or being perceived as a loose person? Like what do all these things mean, right? So talking about sexuality during this Mars energy is going to be important too because it's time to ask ourselves, what turns me on? What do I really like? Who am I as a sexual being? And where do my um, passions lie within that? And this is all um, tying into, and you know, it's funny because I didn't realize that um, the sex workshop that I'm doing is going was landing during this Mars and retrograde. But yeah, so if you are interested in tapping into your sexual energy in the new way, starting to learn about your raw untapped sexual energy, the sexual energy without the trappings of patriarchy on top of it, come to the workshop. You can do it in person or virtually. And we are going to be really digging into this because I'm totally veering off to the left now, but like it is what it is. You've met me. <laughs> but this is the seat of our manifestation, ladies. Our sexuality, our sexual energy is literally 
the essence of our biggest manifestation tools. This is blowing out your lower chakras. We dream it up. It comes in through here. We visualize it. We speak it. We feel it in our hearts. It comes into being in our solar plexus, goes into, into our sacral, and then boom, pops out our root chakra. If you are blocked in your lower chakras, your powers of manifestation are blocked as well because it's so difficult to get this magic out into the physical world. We are literally vessels that birth magic. And part of that birthing of the magic is our sexuality. So not tapping into that power is missing out on a huge part of your magic. So if you are interested in that, there's a link and I'd love to have this discussion with you. I have some comments to read. Hey, Jackie. Sandy says, I keep thinking about dragons. I need to physically release that fire and let the coals cool down naturally. Dragons are, um, and I think during this, this time, it's kind of funny that everybody's like popping in with them, but dragons are huge right now. They've been coming in for a while. And I have to say that in the past two weeks, I don't think I've had one client not tell me something dragon related. So this is a real thing. My friend Brandy is holding a dragon um, workshop forum type thing with Q&A and that sort of thing. So if you're interested, I will post the link in the restoration Facebook group so you can join that um, and look for more dragon stuff coming. We're going to have more skull stuff coming because this is what's happening right now. But I'm going to wrap up the live on this retrograde by saying that you don't have to be afraid of your big feelings. You don't have to be afraid of your passion. Um, the time of being persecuted for being a full fucking woman is over now. So it's time to step back into that power and feel your righteous anger. You angry? Be angry. You sad? Be sad. You want to go have sex? Go have sex. All of these things are very important. So feel into that as we move into this Mars retrograde. And as always, um, if you have questions, post them in the restoration group. We love to have discussions about all of these things over there. And I will be back tomorrow with the weekend update and Peony will be handling that. Okay. I love you guys. The workshop is on the last Wednesday of this month, I want to say, if that sounds right, but the link is there. So love you guys. Have a great Thursday. If you've enjoyed it, please share.